Scott County deputies say a garbage truck driver was under the influence this morning when he flipped his truck. A man is in jail tonight accused of raping a woman months ago. How a DNA test led to his arrest. And a car barrels into a toddler's room. What the driver says led up to the crash. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon. Neighbors say his behavior was bizarre. Tonight, police in Scott County are investigating after the driver of a sanitation truck lost control of that truck and it crashed. It happened in the Mallard Point subdivision north of Georgetown. Police say the man was under the influence. Jordan Blinds has reaction from neighbors who watched the incident unfold. It's our top story at 4.30. Driving under the influence with a blood alcohol level three times the legal limit. That's what investigators say Johnny Gentry is guilty of after he flipped the garbage truck he was driving early this morning. This cell phone video was taken by a neighbor who lives on Wood Duck Lane, where the incident occurred just after 7 this morning. The video shows a man who police identify as Johnny Gentry climbing out of the garbage truck he was driving when it flipped. Deputies say Gentry had been on his route for two hours when the incident occurred. After evaluating the scene, deputies concluded that the driver overcorrected after hitting a retaining wall, which shifted the weight of his load. That momentum causing the truck to flip onto its side in someone's front yard. Upon deputies' arrival on the scene, they detected a strong odor of alcoholic beverage coming from his person. Um, he was still in the truck. Uh, the Scott County Fire Department had to help remove him from the truck. So fortunately, he was not injured severely, but they could detect a strong odor of alcoholic beverage coming from his person. Gentry is currently being held here at the Scott County Detention Center with a $2,000 bond. In Scott County, Jordan Valines, WKYT. We reached out to the waste collection company where Johnny Gentry was employed, but they did not wish to comment on the incident. A Lexington man is in jail tonight charged with rape and knowingly abusing an adult. According to court records, police say in February of last year, 59-year-old James Weathers raped a woman who has an intellectual disability. That woman later had a child. Police say they ran DNA tests on the baby and the results show that Weathers was the father. We're tracking a crime alert in northern Kentucky. Some police agencies there and in Ohio say they're looking for a man accused of robbing several banks. Police in Erlanger, Kentucky, say the man has not been to their city yet, but it appears that the man is heading south. Officers tell us that the man hands the bank teller a note. He's believed to be driving a dark red Honda Civic. A Louisville family is repairing their home this afternoon after a car slammed into it. Police say the car smashed through the home on the outer loop and into, two -year -old, into a two-year-old's bedroom. The parents say they were in that room just moments before the crash. I was in the shower. All I heard was a big loud crash. I jumped out and that's when my husband was like, there's a car in the house, which he actually seen it coming over the ditch line. And he ran to that room before it happened to make sure he wasn't in there. Well, the homeowners say the driver told them that she was on her way to get her tire replaced. The woman was not seriously injured. Police say she's not facing any charges. The family will be staying with relatives until the home can be repaired. The family says they're expecting a baby in September, and they were preparing to make that room a nursery. Well, the weather has been strange, to say the least, <laughs> the last few months. And June is starting out like that, too. Temperatures have been... Uh, cool, even cold, and we've been well below normal the past couple of days. Yeah, and now some muggy weather is coming, and it won't change much. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking some wet weather right before us. Uh, yeah, it's all wet because you got the muggy factor in the air. You just walk outside and you can feel it. It's almost the air you can wear, and then we have showers and thunderstorms that will also be rolling into the area. We're tracking some across extreme southeastern Kentucky. Check out our camps from across Kentucky. First of all, some folks are seeing the sun. Look at Jackson here. You see the blue skies, sunshine actually coming out there. That pushed their temperature into the low 70s. Everywhere else we've highlighted here in this four panel uh, graphic, cloud cover. 
Temperatures still in the 60s. Here in Lexington, we're only at 65 degrees. We got up to 66, though, during the 3 o'clock hour. Defender for this portion of the state, central and western sections of the Commonwealth, dry. But you see that we are tracking a few showers and thunderstorms down to our south and east. Looks like through parts of Letcher County, now drifting into Perry County as well. A little bit of lightning, heavy rain because it's been sitting right over the same real estate for the past hour or so. And when you get into that type of situation where the rain really doesn't go, Anywhere and it's coming down at a pretty good clip, you can run into some swollen creeks and streams, and that's what they're having a little flood advisory down there now. The flow of these showers and storms coming in from our southeast, headed toward the northwest. Very odd setup, but we've got an area of low pressure spinning down there, and it will continue to deliver that moisture into our area from that direction, not only for the rest of the evening, but even into the day tomorrow. I will track it out of here because it's leaving eventually, coming up for you in just a few minutes. Jim, thank you. Today is your last chance to weigh in on changes to the school boundaries in Fayette County. Tonight's public input session starts in about an hour at 5.30. The school board will then vote on the new boundaries. A special committee worked for more than a year to develop new boundaries in anticipation of three new schools in Lexington. The redistricting proposal could affect 5,000 students. Democratic House Speaker Greg Stumbo says the Mountain Parkway should be extended all the way to West Virginia. Stumbo says Kentucky and West Virginia share a vibrant workforce and a highway connecting the areas would unlock the region's potential. Kentucky lawmakers have approved a 10-year, $753 million project to widen a 46-mile stretch of the parkway that, when finished, would create a 400-mile stretch of four-lane highway all the way from Paducah to Pikeville. One lucky ticket holder is waking up millions of dollars richer. A winning Mega Millions ticket was sold in Illinois. The jackpot, $260 million. There's good news for someone in Kentucky as well. A $1 million winner was sold here in Powell County. Lottery officials say PJ's Food Mart on East College Avenue in Stanton sold that ticket. If you would like to check your ticket, here are those winning numbers from last night. 2, 9, 11, 22, and 23. The Mega Ball is 12. A House committee is looking into the increasing threat of violent terrorist attacks in the U.S. Lawmakers claim the attack on a Prophet Muhammad drawing contest is proof that terrorism has gone viral. Craig Boswell has a story now from Washington. ISIS uses a slick social media campaign to recruit new members, and lawmakers are concerned the U.S. is not doing enough to respond. We are no longer hunting terrorists living in caves. We are facing an enemy whose messages and calls to violence are posted and promoted in real time over the Internet. The terror attack last month in Garland, Texas, drew greater attention to the threat from ISIS in America. The Obama administration says Elton Simpson and Nadir Sufi acted on their own. But after the incident, a suspected ISIS member quickly posted more attacks are coming with 71 so-called trained soldiers in 15 states. This event highlights the growing threat our nation faces from a new generation of terrorists, often operating from afar, who use social media. Lawmakers believe there are thousands of people already in the U.S. following ISIS propaganda online who could potentially attack America if called on. We know that the threats from foreign and domestic terrorist groups are not going away overnight. On Tuesday, law enforcement shot and killed a man under surveillance by terrorism investigators. Officials say he posted ISIS propaganda online and he is another example of individuals radicalized by social media. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And police say the man who was killed Tuesday lunged with a knife at members of the Joint Terrorism Task Force who approached him to question him. A Game of Thrones star is taking on a completely different role for a new movie. Later on WKYT News at 4, we'll have a sneak peek at Kit Harrington's new movie. Tracking cloud cover and a few showers and storms out there, but we'll also be tracking some warmer temperatures as we head over the next few days. I'll take a closer look at all of this coming up.